Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's Midnight back again, bringing you another episode of Midnight 1v1. And today I am joined by an extra special guest, one of my good friends here. He's joined us on the podcast, Games Over Plastic podcast, a couple times. He is the editor-in-chief. He is the general of the Anti-Weeb Alliance. We have Lockmort. How you doing, man? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. What a cool name. Your, your podcast name is Midnight 1v1. Yeah, well, this show is just Midnight 1v1. It's just me and one other person just talking like about uh, some stuff. I like that. I like that. That's cool. That rolls off the tongue. That's that's good. That's a good yeah. find. Well done. So, no, I'm very excited to be here, dude. Thanks for inviting me. It's a very good topic. A topic uh, we're both very knowledgeable about, so that, that'll be fun. It'll be a fun talk. Absolutely. Um, and today's topic is going to be just a, just a general discussion about western rpgs we're going to talk about what of our some of our favorite western rpgs favorite studios what makes these games so great and why they are so much better than the weebery and the japanese role-playing game that a lot of lesser humans tend to enjoy out there so well said well said um, exactly. You know, exactly down with weebery and uh, western rpg greatness will always prevail what a um, great show i always I already love this great show great show yeah so uh, let's go ahead and get into it, um, Locke. Mm -hmm. For people who don't know you, um, why don't you go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself and about your history, I guess, uh, with uh, Western RPGs? Sure, sure. Well, that's easy. I'm, I'm, we're both in our 40s now, dude, because I recently turned 40, which is disgusting. <laughs> Sadly. Yeah. Um, uh, I still can't get it over my lips. It's, it's really revolting. Um, but that means we're old. So we grew up with Western RPGs, right? Okay. Um, I remember my first RPG I ever played was like Ultima 4, Ultima 5, I think, on PC. Because mm -hmm. growing up, I didn't have a console. I only had a PC. So I grew up with PC games, CRPGs primarily. So Ultima, uh, Fallout, the very old Bethesda games, uh, Daggerfall, uh, of course, Oblivion came after that, Morrowind, uh, Arena was one of my first RPGs, Might and Magic, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, there were a lot of those. So I basically grew up with CRPGs, which is still, to this day, my favorite genre. Well, most other people, or not most other people, but a lot of people grew up on consoles like the yeah. SNES or the NES. So they grew up with Final Fantasy um, or other crap. Um, <laughs> but but not me, not me. And not most of my friends here in Belgium, too. We all grew up with PCs. I don't know why that is, because there were consoles around us. But we personally, I never really cared about consoles. I was mostly focused on PC and PC gaming. I, there wasn't really a reason to it, really. Um, but yeah, ever since I was a kid, I mean, Ultima was one of the first games I played. I think it was Ultima 5 or 6 that I played first as a kid, and that completely blew me away. And why that is, is because Western RPGs, which all started a long time ago in the late 80s, have this thing about them where story is highly important, but so are characters. And I think the major difference between these games and, and Japanese role-playing games is that you can actually play them. Um, <laughs> you control the character and you control what the character does. And you don't just yeah. click on dialogue boxes to, uh, to continue. You actually pick what dialogue choice you want to pick and it has consequences. So you basically yeah. play a role. It says, it says this in the, in, in the genre. Um, while in J JRPGs, you uh, watch a love or you read a lovely book, um, which is not um, which is not as um, as interesting to me. There's less player agency. I know everyone will disagree, but that's okay. That's perfectly fine. They, they can be wrong. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's what I grew up with. What did you grow up with? Yeah, I think you made some some excellent points there. Um, a lot of the the weebery and the Japanese role playing games, a lot of it is kind of like visual novel stuff where you're just kind of watching two sprites or whatever, two gifs, just talking at each other and just clicking through. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's that is I think what is something that's so amazing and so genre defining about the Western RPG and that we fell in love with. You kind of mentioned it is that choice and consequence, right? Yeah. Like. Some of my favorite games and developers of all time, first of all, Bioware. 
I love Bioware. I love Dragon Age Origins. You've got the amazing choices. You've got eight different, eight or nine different starting points that affect the story, right? If you're like an elf, um, like the choices that you make in that beginning part, people will react to you differently and maybe they'll be prejudiced against you or they'll yeah. bring up, they'll bring up something that you did. Uh, or if you're the human noble, like that's different than the poor human or whatever. Um, it's just very cool. And then, of course, you have the big choices like whether or not you want to have sex with a certain witch and give her the demon child um, and the repercussions that come from that. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just an awesome thing. Um, whereas usually when you look at the JRPGs out there, I do enjoy JRPGs as well, but to a lesser extent um, because they don't have they usually don't have much choice and consequence. Usually it's just like a very linear set narrative. It's usually some real angsty like uh, thing where it's like, we're, we're high school kids and we have to defeat God. Like that's like your typical <laughs> JRPG story. Whereas in the West you have like awesome medieval settings and might and magic and sorcery and arrows. And you're going into a dungeon and you're killing these bosses and getting some great loot. Mm -hmm. um to equip your character because it's not just a visual novel no um, or or sci-fi of course because you have a, a fallout of course or mass fallout effect. Or, mass yeah. effect hell yeah starfield huh 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 oh, well yeah. starfield's <laughs> getting better the, that update that they just put out um supposedly so gotten much better yeah too late but uh yeah put it's up not some too problem. late it's not well, too if, late if wait they, till shattered yeah. space comes out uh my boy exactly. todd is gonna save gaming okay yeah, that's what I said last year too. But we'll, we'll, we'll. I have faith that if shattered, what's it called? Shattered space. Shattered space. If that is good, then like I feel like they can they can still have a redemption arc, but they better put it out fast because it's been almost a year now. So mm. wasn't it? I think it's rumored that it's supposed to come out around September. You've been hearing that. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that is correct. That is correct. That is. That's a good that's window. Pretty, mm, that is a good window, but it's also pretty late after launch. That's like an entire year. So. Remember when they when they marketed um, Starfield and they said, "Oh, you're going to be playing this game forever for 15 years." I don't know anyone who's still playing it, so um, not really. Luck. Yeah. I'm sure Good some people are, but not many. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think when you when you consider the way games are developed these days, um, having the expansion come out one year later is almost par for the course these days with games taking seven years to make and shit. Yeah. But. Yeah. Um, yeah. They just have to hit it. I think if Shattered Space comes out in September or whatever, and it's really good and it's focusing on the um, what was that? What was that? House, uh, House for Rune. House for Rune. If it's focusing on House for Rune, and if it's like we talked about in the past, kind of more focused on one or two planets, kind of like a big yeah. open world. Hey, cat, look this kitty. <laughs> that is my. Uh, that's my cat. Yeah, love cats. Right. What's the cat's that. name? Uh, her name is Ellie. She's named after Ellie from The Last of Us. Oh, wow. Okay. Very An original. Yeah. Another Western great game. Yeah. Not really dog. a role-playing game, kind of, but good, good, but good, though. No, no. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, Starfield, did you grow up playing Bethesda game? What was your first Bethesda game, which is like a huge Western RPG developer? Of course. What, what was, was your first one Oblivion or Morrowind or... Yeah, that's a good question. So I always talk about how I'm a massive BGS fanboy, um, but that's not really true. Um, I'm really an Elder Scrolls fan. Um, okay. I'm not massive sure. into Fallout, um, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Um, okay. My first big Bethesda BGS game was Oblivion. So I played Oblivion on the Xbox 360 or whatever it was. Nice. Maybe the original, I don't remember. Um, and it was fantastic. And I beat that game and I loved it. I loved the choice and consequence. I loved the factions, you know, how you had the the night, uh, the Dark Brotherhood and the Fighters Guild and the Thieves Guild and stuff like they always do. Yeah, and it's dude. great. And then, of yeah. course, Skyrim. Now, that game is one of my all time favorite games. It's in my top five, I'm sure, of all, sure. Of all time. It's just a masterpiece. Yeah, of um, course. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. Uh, but but you could already see like the different like something like Skyrim that doesn't just that doesn't exist in any other country genre. Maybe you can people compare these days. They compare Elder Ring to Skyrim, but I don't think that's a right comparison at all. Not not at all. Um, but a lot of people do that because they're both open world, I guess, and they're both about exploration. But the exploration in Elder Ring is nothing like Skyrim. So I, I never got that comparison. Yeah. Um, what do you, what do you think? Because because what is Elden Ring? Is that that's not a that, yeah, that's clearly not a Western. The Souls like, um, yeah. so I, th I think Elden Ring actually is one of the best examples of a Japanese 
Western yeah. style role playing game where they did a they did a great job. I think they they almost hit Skyrim levels on the exploration. I would say because it was fun exploring the map, and then you would see a cave, and you would go in the cave, and then you would fight mm-hmm. a little boss, and you would get some loot. So they kind of hit the Skyrim elements there, but where they really fell short was with the narrative. The, the narrative was super linear once again. Yeah. Um, you didn't have branching paths. You didn't have fighters and thieves guilds and Dark Brotherhood and in, in Elden Ring. It was no. just like oh, we're just going to kill a bunch of bosses and we're going to save the the third tree or whatever. Yeah, I didn't get... Well, that's just stupid old me, but I didn't get the story in Elder Ring, so I didn't care. Um, (laughs) I like the gameplay. I like the world. I I love the Elder Ring. I thought it was an amazing game, but the story... People... The same with Dark Souls. Dark Souls is one of my favorite games of all time. I couldn't tell you what the hell it's about. I have no idea. Still don't. I played it a million times. Still don't know what the hell it's about. And I'm not going to watch a three-hour YouTube video explaining to me what the story is. Um, don't care. Um, but I love those games. They're amazing. So it's not just Western RPGs that like captivate me or you, or you, of course. Um, there's also Japanese RPGs that can do it right, I guess. Um, but that's not a JRPG, so that doesn't really count that's more like yeah. a, a a japanese western game i guess like souls games are more like japanese western games because you actually get to play them yeah um, you get to play them and they're set in a western setting like you know medieval yeah. knights and stuff yeah yeah exactly exactly uh, you you, you don't like fallout is, is that what you said earlier i'm just not a massive fallout guy it's never hooked me like i don't know like that whole uh post-apocalyptic setting just isn't as cool to me as like the medieval setting mm. um i kind of like old school medieval and i like sci-fi but like that interstitial in between where it's like in the 50s and it's just radiation it's just it didn't do it for me as much i did love new vegas uh, I absolutely love New Vegas, but of course that's not a BGS game. That is Obsidian. Obsidian's mm. one of my favorite developers. I know you recently have uh, kind of said that uh, you think Obsidian's a bit overrated. Um, you, is that how you feel? Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's a tough one because Obsidian makes great games. Or no, I should yeah, Obsidian makes great games that for some reason never click with me. Um. Every game that Obsidian has made, except for the Stick of Thruf, uh, Truth, I always I thought they're... It. Yeah, I, I love the, the Stick of Truth, too. Uh, but every other game they've made is always a lesser to me than the original they're based on. Like, Pillars of Eternity is, of course, an, an original game, an original IP. It's the prequel to Avowed, basically. Um, but to me, that's way less than Baldur's Gate 2. Or KOTOR 2, to me, way less than KOTOR. Or Never Winter Nights 2, way less than Never Winter Nights. Um, Are those all Bioware games? Those, um, Never Winter Nights, yeah, it was Bioware, KOTOR was Bioware, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they seem to always follow up Bioware and just come a little bit short, but I mean, Bioware is hard to follow up, dude. Bioware is like the goats. (laughs) They, they, hopefully, they'll be that again, yeah, we'll see. We'll get into that, too, (laughs) I want to talk about that, but. Sure, sure. Um, but uh, yeah, when it comes to Obsidian, New Vegas, I know a lot of people love New Vegas. I love it. I like New Vegas, but I prefer three and even four to New Vegas. Um, oh. Because I don't know, Obsidian writing is just, I know people always say, oh, it's gray and it's it's darker and it's, it's edgier. But to me, it, it's not. It's just, it, Obsidian writing to me always seems like, like the kid in high school who writes fan fiction. And then everybody goes, oh, yeah, this is so dark. It's so cool. Like, no, but yeah, that's okay. But that's not that's not what it's about. Like, it's I don't I I, I can't name you a single obsi- Obsidian character, original character that's better than a Bioware character or that's better than a Bethesda character, which is a problem, I think, if you're supposed to be like the best writers in the business. So, yeah, I do think they're a bit overrated. That doesn't mean I think they're bad because I love New Vegas. I think that's a great game. I love KOTOR 2. I think that's a great game. I love Never Winter Nights 2. I think that's a great game. I just think they're lesser than the originals um, they're based on. I think it's fair to say that um, the games that they've followed up and made the sequels to maybe aren't as good as the originals. Um, but I don't think that that makes them bad or um, no. or not worthy of praise because, they, like I said, they're following up the legends. I mean, they're following up Bioware at their peak. We're talking about KOTOR. Like, that was yep. peak Bioware. It's hard to follow that up. But they made a, they made a, a very solid sequel. It just wasn't as good as the first. Yep. Um, and then... I mean, they're following up Neverwinter Nights again. That's Bioware in their peak. 
Um, mm-hmm. So it's hard to follow those up. Um, I would say with New Vegas, I think New Vegas is peak uh, of Sivian for me, besides the Stick of Truth, um, yeah. because I did think that I did enjoy that a lot more than Fallout Three and Four, the bits that I played. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the only one I actually beat. I beat Fallout New Vegas. Yes. Yeah. Fallout three and four, I kind of got bored and dropped both of them. Hmm. Um, okay. I thought New Vegas yeah, story was awesome. I really liked the choice and consequence. Like they present you with kind of three different paths in that game. You could yeah. help the NCR and side yeah. with them and have them take over, or you could side with uh, Caesar and the Legion, who I thought was awesome. Yeah. Caesar was a great character. Um, I love how they're always like, ah, way true to Kaiser <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> um, and he's out there enslaving people and like just yeah. being real evil, but he was really cool. Um, and that, or you could also side with like Mr. House and the strip and stuff. So there was kind of right. three branching paths and I thought it was just really good. And you have that Epic battle at the end at, uh, at the Hoover dam Hoover and dam. stuff. Yeah. Um, I really think that was, that was narrative excellence to me. Um, mm-hmm. But to be fair, though, I didn't beat three and four, so maybe they also had narrative excellence there. Well, the, the thing that bothered me about New Vegas is, is everybody keeps praising it, right? Like, oh, this is the true Fallout. Like, no, it's not. Like, every idea in New Vegas originated in two, and what what the idea was for three, which was called Van Buren. Mm-hmm. And those were made by Black Owl, by Bioware. And Obsidian people worked on them, but they weren't the people ma- who made those games. So what they basically did is they took those old ideas, made New Vegas with that, and then everyone started praising them like, oh, this is so much better. But you, you're as old as me. So you'll remember when New Vegas launched, people didn't like that game that much. I think it got eights and sevens everywhere. And not just because of the bugs, but people were also like, oh, this isn't this isn't Fallout. Like, you don't start in a vault. What the hell is up with that? You also don't start in a vault in two, so that doesn't really matter. But um, so... I, I always feel like, or I always think that, that Obsidian gets like a little bit too much praise. We'll see this year, though, because Avowed, when Avowed comes out, I'm mm-hmm. so curious I'm what that is going to be. Because do you, you, you love the Outer Worlds, I presume. I like the Outer Worlds, yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you love it? Uh, I don't love it. I like it a lot. It okay. was like it was like an eight and a half for me. Yeah, like same. Like 8.5. Same, exactly. Eight, eight and a half, eight, in a, yeah, exactly. But then... It's always with Obsidian games, you know. I always have that feeling like, ah, you you just didn't get there. Like you barely missed it. Yeah. And I, I'm getting that same vibe from Avowed, where it's like the stuff they showed, which isn't much. So I presume we're we're about to, to see a lot more. Yeah, the, the stuff case probably. Exactly. Exactly. In like a week and two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um. So the stuff so far they showed of Avowed, I was like, uh oh, that is okay. Cool. You can fight a, a lizard man in the swamp. That's Again, something you didn't invent, but pretty cool, I guess. And there's this blue follower guy. Okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> where's the game? Where's Where's the rest of it? Why aren't you showing anything? And I think it's because they don't. At that point, they didn't have anything yet. Um, so I doubt it, it. It'll come out this year, but we'll see. Hopefully, it does, and hopefully, it's excellent. I love to be proven wrong, and I love for for I would love for a vow to be like this big sprawling, epic game. But I don't think it will be. I think it will be more like the Outer Worlds. Um, which is fun. I, I, I like the Outer Worlds perfectly fine. Um, kind of like a more medieval Outer Worlds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like smaller cool, scale. Man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's cool. But imagine if they had, if they imagine if they really put in the effort and like took a couple of years and made their own Skyrim, that would be beautiful. Like that very first trailer. Yeah. Remember with the cave and then you had the guy with the magic and the sword. That was so cool. That's when I thought, oh, finally guys finally yeah. you're doing it you're putting in the effort you're putting in the time you're making your own original game but then it turns out no it's a sequel to pillars of eternity and i was like oh okay well that world isn't that interesting and then <laughs> you you saw what they you saw what they did in that, in that first gameplay trailer and again because it, it sounds like i'm really negative i i like obsidian i think they're great i just don't think they're the best and they could be i think um yeah. Obsidian for me is one of my favorite studios, but they're not, they're like at that second tier. They're not at that top tier. Yeah. That top tier is Bioware. That top tier is BGS. Yeah. Um, that top tier is probably, I have to put Larian up there now after uh, Baldur's mm-hmm. Gate 3 was, was phenomenal. Yeah. Obsidian's yeah. like that next tier. I've always said this and people argue with me and people get mad at me when I say this and I don't, maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong, but I always have this energy and this, this 
opinion of Obsidian that they're kind of like more of like a double A studio. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like they don't really go, they don't go for the big Skyrim. You know what I mean? They kind of go for those smaller, more compressed games. They're usually a little bit buggy, a little bit janky. Yes. Um, and they are usually like that eight, 8.5 style games. Um, yep. They're they're definitely not perfect, but I just I do like the narrative and the choice and consequence stuff that they usually focus on, mm-hmm. um, and I just I just enjoy them. You know, like I said, they're not the best, but I like them a lot. That, that's where I am with Obsidian, um, yeah, and I, I'm excited for Avowed. I loved Pentiment. Did you play Pentiment? No, I, I played it Dude. for like 20 minutes, and I was like, okay, I get Dude, it. Dude, it's so good. Oh my god! It's if you year, ever. If you ever um, are kind of bored and kind of in, in a mood to read a little bit, um, I'm telling you, dude, the narrative in that game is so good. And the way it ratchets up the tension, especially in Act 2, um, like there's this this high stress. Like I have to figure out who is doing these murders. And that's mm-hmm. not, I don't think that's really a spoiler. They kind of show that there's murders like right in the jump. Um, mm-hmm. You have to figure out who's behind this before this whole town erupts into a, a big war. And you, you don't have enough time to talk to everybody. So you have to really narrow it down and be like, I really think it was this guy so i need to talk to him and him and you got to get it right um otherwise shit the shit hits the fan it's just really well done and it was really good and it's not very long either um how long, how long is it um i want to say it's been a, it's been a while since i played it so i don't know for sure but just off the top of my head i feel like it was probably like a five six hour type experience oh um, okay. i'd Maybe. have to look it up i could be completely wrong with that um oh, that's fine. but let me just check. Uh, talk about something else while I'm looking that up. <laughs> well, the, 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 my dislike, or no, that's not even dislike. My my annoyance with Obsidian began all the way back with KOTOR 2. Because when KOTOR 2 launched, it launched, first of all, in an abysmal state. Um, like every everybody trying to play it had bugs galore, constantly breaking quests at, at every corner. And what really annoyed me was the ending, which wasn't there. <laughs> so in the original, before Kotor 2 got the restoration mod, it just ended. Just you float off in space. That's not even a spoiler because that's the ending. You float off in space, done, credits. And I remember sitting there as a kid. I think I was 16, 15, 16 years old. I remember saying out loud, like, what the fuck is this? What did you do? Like, you you idiots. How can you ruin this? How can you ruin Kotor like this? But which of course is a little bit over dramatic because they didn't ruin it. But that just annoyed me so much that maybe in my head ever since then, I, I haven't been willing to give them another chance, but uh, maybe there's yeah. my cat, by the way. See, hello, F- Hi, fellow cat, cat lovers. Mm. Yeah. So I was completely wrong about Pentiment. It's, it's 13 hours long. So, uh, but still, that's not, that's it's, it's, a, it's a really good game narrative wise. Yeah. It's a lot of reading. So you got to go in there with the right mindset that you're down to do some reading. It is like a JRPG in that regard, but man, is it a cool story with that ratcheting tension and, and you get to make the choices of who you're going to interrogate, who you're going to accuse, who you're going to get killed. And if mm. you catch the right person or not, um, otherwise shit's going to hit the fan, you know? So it, it's good. What do you um, compare? What would you compare it to? I don't know. I, it's got, it's very unique. I'm not sure that it compares to much. Mm. Um, maybe it probably compares to like some, some of the weeb games like Danganronpa or something that I haven't played. I just know Maddie always talks about like that. I think that's like a murder mystery type Mm -hmm. stuff. So it's kind of like that. It's just good. Um, I don't know that it has a lot of replay value because I think the ending is mostly going to be the same no matter what. Um, but like, still the choices that you make as far as who you're going to accuse and who you're going to get killed and, and whether or not you're able to minimize the damage uh, mm-hmm. is just, it's really impactful and it was, it was really suspenseful and I liked it, but okay, cool. Um, going back though, to what you were saying, um, refresh my memory. What was the last thing you said? <laughs> I got distracted with Pentiment. Uh, well, I, w- I was saying oh, that KOTOR, 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 KOTOR 2 didn't have an ending when it came out. And I know people will defend it like, no, that's the point of it. It's like dark and edgy. And at the point of it, does it's all pointless. Like, no, Nihilist that's a stupid, stu- yeah, that's a stupid fucking ending when, when there's I'll, no ending. So go ahead. I'll be honest with you. It's been so long since I played that. I played that back on like the original Xbox. Um, first of all, I played on console. I didn't play on PC. I played it on sure. Xbox. And I don't know if maybe it would these technical issues that you're speaking about, maybe that was more on PC. I don't remember having any bugs or glitches like at all that, that 
that struck with me or st- stayed with me. I feel like the game was fine from a technical aspect, at least on console. Mm. Um, as far as the ending is concerned, I'll be completely honest with you. I can't tell you a damn thing about that game. I don't remember the story. I don't remember anything. The only thing that I do remember is that I had a lot of fun and that I, I, I that I liked it. But I can't but, tell you what happened, really. But you do remember KOTOR 1. A hundred percent, because that had the big twist. That's what I Th- mean. Those twists sticks with you. Yeah, that's that's what I mean, though. That's just that's that's yeah. exactly what I mean. Like the originals always fall. Well, maybe not with Fallout with you, but Fallout Three is way more ingrained in my mind. When you leave the vault for the first time and you get to the super duper market, wow! And in New Vegas, it's like, oh god, I'm in Good Springs again. I have to hunt these fucking geckos again, or or <laughs> go behind the bar and like shoot the bottles. Like, oh god, which is not a good start, I think, to 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 a game. Um, but again, I'm I'm alone in that because everybody likes New Vegas way more than anything else. So I love it. Yeah, I love exactly. it. But um, yeah. So, anyways, but let's 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 bring this back to some of the more the good stuff. Um, we wanted to talk about Bioware. We both brought this up. So, mm-hmm. Bioware is is probably Bioware. I would say is my favorite studio of all time. If I had to pick, um, just the games that they've made over the years, the the Knights of the Old Republic one. Um, I didn't play the old Baldur's Gates and stuff, but I'm sure I would have loved it, and I. You know, I want to go back eventually and get to them because I loved three by Larian. Um, but obviously I played Mass Effect. I played Dragon Age. Um, I played all these games and I love them so much. I love the choice and consequence. I love the the, the Paragon and Renegade options. Um, I love how characters can die or they can live based on your choices. And that even carries over into other games. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to talk about Dragon Age Dreadwolf. But before we get into that... Um, what do you think? Like, what is your favorite Western RPG studio? If you had to pick one, mine is Bioware. Mine used to be Bioware, but they haven't put out quality in over a decade. So that I, I don't think I can do that anymore. Mine has to be Larian right now, uh, but it used to be Bioware forever up until Inquisition. Um, that's when I figured like, uh Oh, this is not going well. And then they released Andromeda and I was like, Oh, and then they released Anthem and I was like, okay, bye, 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 bye. Um, so yeah. hopefully, I'm very hopeful they, they'll pull it back. But Baldur's Gate 2, to this day, for the past 20, is, has it been 30 years now? No, 20 years, 23 years, has been my favorite game of all time. And it still is to this day, Yeah. Um, which is a, a Black Owl, which is mostly Bioware, uh, a Bioware game. So I love Bioware. I, dude, I remember when Dragon Age Origins came out, uh, when it launched in 20, uh, 2009. Yeah, I remember... I was in college and I just, I pretended I was sick for like two weeks. I told my girlfriend at the time, like, oh no, I feel, I can't come over. I think I have some, uh, something I can't, I, won't, I don't want to give it to you. And I told my, my professors and my, my classmates like, oh no, no guys, no, I'm so sick. And I was just in, in Dragon Age Origins for like, for like two weeks. Um, that game. Woo. Maddie's making a video about it right now over on the. Uh, Retro about the whole Dragon Age saga, and I'm gonna do Dragon Age 2 because I, I feel like that game gets way too much hate for no reason. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Dragon Age is is impeccable. It's insane to me that they haven't remastered that uh, before Dreadwolf comes out. Crazy. Yeah, it is. That is um, I know why they didn't, or at least Maddie explained to me why they didn't. It's because you can't. Like Dragon Age Origins, you can't really translate that to console anymore because you, you can't put um uh, Origins and two on the same level because they're, they're so different. And then Inquisition is another completely different game, so you really can't translate them to a new engine, which will make sense, I guess. So it's 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 very hard to do, unlike Mass Effect, which was pretty simple to do. Um, but yeah, it's it's replaying them right now. Maddie's playing through uh, replaying through Origins, and I'm replaying through two. Those games have aged wonderfully in every aspect. They still play so well. The stories are still, dude. I played like the first couple of hours for for uh, from Origins to should test it out again to see how how did this work again. And Maddie did too, and we were both hooked. We each put like four or five hours into it already, and then I was like, no, I have to go to two because I have to make <laughs> a video about it. But you, don't, the the writing in those games is so much better than anything we get today from any other studio, including Baldur's Gate Three. Um, those games are just impeccable. And then Mass Effect, I I love Mass Effect, but I thought Dragon Age to me anyway was always a tier above Mass Effect. Um, even though I love Mass Effect, Mass Effect One didn't blow me away at the time. I thought it was good. I thought it was fun. I thought it was great, but it didn't blow me away. Mass Effect Two did. Um, 
top 10 game yeah. of all time uh, for everyone, I think. The incredible game, beyond incredible. Uh, same goes for Mass Effect 3. But then, yeah, Andromeda. Hopefully, Dreadwolf won't be in a, uh, an Andromeda situation, but we'll see. You know. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I agree with a lot of what you just said. Um, Mass Effect 1 was was really good. It was like an eight eight and a half. Yeah. It was like an Obsidian level game. Um, <laughs> Mass Effect 2 and 3 are just like 10 out of 10 masterpiece yeah. games, both of them. And I actually have a, a semi-unpopular opinion. Mass Effect 3 is my favorite of the bunch. I, I know like a lot it. of people got super butthurt about the uh, the ending, mm. which, which is fair enough, I understand. But I honestly feel like with the extended cut that they put out, yeah. um, I really feel like the ending is, is pretty decent with that. And yeah. just the way it just brings together all of your choices. Um, and I always talk about how it has like this Avengers Assemble moment at the end when you're pulling up to when you pull up to earth they actually put like a little cut scene for every faction and every key person that you recruited along the way they show up like we're here for you we're here for you we're here for you we're here for you and it's just like this big avengers assemble nostalgia emotional moment it's like oh that's my boy oh i remember him oh i saved him here he is to help in the fight and it was just so powerful and so cool and i love that yeah. Um, going back to Dragon Age a little bit, it's funny. Dragon Age Origins for me is 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 peak. That's that's masterpiece level right there. Yeah. Um, when I played uh, Dragon Age two, I was a little bit disappointed when I was playing it. I was like, this this kind of sucks compared to the first game. I'm like, I don't get to create my own character. I'm just playing as this champion dude. Um, whatever his name was. Oh. I, I don't get to explore a whole world. Instead, we're just in the city of Kirkwall or whatever city it was. Yep. And I'm just like, this is kind of, and they keep reusing the same environments. We keep fighting in like the same yep. five stages. Yeah. And I'm like, it. this sucks. But what was so interesting is the, through 80, 80, 90% of the game, I'm like, man, this kind of sucks. Comparatively speaking, it didn't suck, yeah, no, but compared true. to origins, I was like, mm -hmm. man, this is kind of weak. But what was so great was the, after the end of that game, the ending is so explosive, quite literally, uh, and powerful. I didn't see it coming at all. And I was like, holy shit, what yeah. the fuck? Oh, my God. As soon as that ended, immediately, I was like, I want to replay it. I want to play it again. Now, I didn't because I was busy with other stuff. But I really I went from saying, like, this game kind of sucks to, like, wanting to play it a second time. That's how good that ending was. It was crazy. Yeah, Dragon Age 2 does something that no other game has done since. Is It takes place in one location, and that location changes over the course of the game. That's not true what I just said. Other games do that too, but none, no other game does it like Dragon Age 2, because your choices... It, your choices really matter. Like the city changes according to your choices. Do you go with the Templars? City changes. Mages, city changes. Everything, even your personality changes. Remember, you had like three picks. You had like uh, the, the good one, the bad one, and the sarcastic, jokey one. And after a while, the engine really picks up on the choices you picked before. So the engine knows you're a jokey character. So it automatically picks that choice for you in cutscenes and stuff. So hmm. the thing that made Dragon Age so so important is is what I'm seeing right now. Now that I'm replaying it after twelve years, yeah. 13 years, Jesus, um, for the first time, is is that it It holds a huge importance for, for the lore of the world. Like the, the lore in, in Kirkwall or the lore in Dragon Age 2 is what basically shaped Inquisition. There's a lot of stuff from, there's a lot of setup, of course, from Origins, a lot of setup. But 2 really dives into the, the personal stakes of, of the lore, yeah. which makes it so cool to me. It's so different i this is why i wish they made a remaster because people really should go back to two i know I it was, too. yeah I, I know it was hated at the time i felt the same way at the time when it when two came out i was i too was like this what the hell did they do like every every battle was the same every environment looks the same which is still true that sucks um but the way the mechanics are implemented they've never done that before and i i can't think of a single game maybe mafia 2 i guess with the seasons i need to play um, that great game um but yeah it's it's so original and then when they got the three inquisition um which was a good game um, i liked but it. it but it wasn't a great game um mostly because of the villain to me that the villain was just one note weird and kind of boring um, i can't even remember the villain <laughs> so what does that tell you yeah corinthius like the big brain <laughs> basically yeah. brainiac um 
but yeah, there, there wasn't much to it. But the characters in Inquisition were really fun. So we'll see what Dread Wolf does. Apparently, uh, well, I, I can't say anything about it, but it's it apparently it's going to be good. Um, I hope so. I've said this before on a couple things, um, but Dragon Age Dread Wolf is my number one most anticipated game of 2024. I can't wait, and I'm just pre- I'm just hoping and praying that my beloved Bioware, even though even though it's not at all the same studio, it's like it's like 90 95 percent new guys. We know this. Um, I'm still hoping though that they can they can bring it home that they can bring it back bring back the greatness even though it's a new team there's no rule that says a new team can't make a great game exactly so i'm just hoping that dreadwolf is going to be awesome and that we have a great time and that also by them making a great game it just extends the life of the studio and we don't have to worry about them getting shut down because i want mass effect 4 Mm -hmm. that's going to be awesome i hope and yeah i'm praying and i'm hoping and i'll be there day one no matter what even that's, if the reviews, even if the reviews are like this game sucks, I'm still going to be playing that game day one, and I will find out for myself. Yeah, same here. Um, the the things I'm 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 hearing about it is well, first of all is that it's good, and second of all is that it, it's going to come way sooner than than we expect. So, I guess we'll see it at, at the summer game fest. At some, I don't know. I, I guess we'll um, we'll see it there. But if it's not good, they're done. Like, there's no way that they can survive that. But I, I have faith that it it it, it will be. It will be good. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if they could appear at the Xbox showcase uh, or, or, or at Keeley's one of the two. It, it'll um, be, key. I, I don't think anyone wants to appear at the Xbox showcase at this point. Who's not directly affiliated with Xbox. Um, <laughs> I, I think that, 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 that wouldn't be a smart marketing move at this point, but um, there'll be a Keeley shows for, for if they're there, you never know, of course, with these rumors, but um, yeah, that would be cool. That would be awesome. Well, let's hope. I'll I'll be there though. Can't wait. Yeah. Shout out to Dragon Age. Shout out to Bioware. Um. So that, like I said, that was my number one. Um. So is you said Bioware was your number one, and then it switched to to who? Larian. It was Bioware. Then it switched to Bethesda until Starfield. Until Starfield. Um. Which I know you love Starfield, right? I know. I know you thought it. It, it, it was a great. I game. don't love Starfield. I like Starfield oh. a lot. Okay, you like it a lot. That, okay. So, like, here's love, and then here's like, I, I'm like here, like it's close to love, but it's not quite love yet. Okay, it's, okay. it has flaws, but that, that that that's fair. That's fair. Um, Starfield to me was like the anti bio uh, anti Bethesda game. Um, Bethesda, I remember playing Daggerfall, what is one of Bethesda's earlier Elder Scrolls games. And Daggerfall was marketed like you have the whole continent and you could go anywhere and do anything, which was true. But the result of that was, was that you could just click on the map. I want to go to this town. And this town looked exactly like that town. And all the NPCs looked the same. And there were no distinct characters almost. And all the stories were just kind of kind of middling, kind of kind of samey. And I honestly got the same feeling from Starfield. Like I played, I didn't even finish Starfield. I got like, I played 60 hours on Steam and then I played 60 hours on Xbox. So I have 120 hours combined um, because I wanted to pick different choices and see see where it led to. And it didn't lead to anywhere Um, because every choice you made in in Starfield was instance. So or at least in my experience. So every choice I made, I saw the consequence and then I never went back to it. It, it was just gone. Because people kept telling me like, oh, the factions are so cool, which is a staple. But there's the staple, right? Like, mm-hmm. The factions are cool. You do the factions quest. Then you become the leader and you get like the, the, the what's it called? The radiant the quest. Yeah. yeah, the rewards and like the radiant quest and it just keeps going. Um, but in Starfield, I, I, did the, I did two faction quests and they were done. And I was like, uh, okay. And... What it, now what? They're just, they're dumb. Okay, great. Um, that's not what I play Bethesda games for. That's what I play other RPGs for. But Bethesda games, I play for exploration. Mm-hmm. And I play them to have an influence on the world. Like, like I, I, I've told this story so many times, but it, it's true. Like, in, in Skyrim or in Oblivion or even in Morrowind, there's a sign. And I shoot an arrow in the sign and I go away. And I play the game for 100 hours and I come back to the starting point. My arrow is still in that sign. Mm-hmm. I kill someone. I leave the body in a ditch. I go somewhere else. I come back. The body is still in a ditch. Mm-hmm. That is what a Bethesda game is to me. I, me as a player, has an, have, have a distinct influence on the world. But in Starfield, you fly to a planet. 
You do your little quest line there. You go back. You you go back to the city, and you'll never visit that planet again because there's no point in it. Why would you go back? Mm. Um, which to me is a huge is- issue with Starfield. My only issue with Starfield, really, because all the rest I liked. Um, but that is what killed the game for me. Uh, I, how do you feel about that? What, what do you think? Yeah, I think we've talked about this before, but I think, yeah, that is where the game kind of does fall flat is on the exploration because they just went too big. Like I've said before, um, they definitely went way too big. A thousand planets is ridiculous. A hundred planets even is ridiculous. Like they should have focused on like 10 to 15 planets and really made them great. Um, I mean, a lot of, a lot of the stuff that makes Bethesda is still in there, but it's just so Mm -hmm. scattershot. Like you still can, like, I remember like, because uh, one of the things that was really annoying was the uh, encumbrance, like, you know, constantly being encumbered. Um, but I, I found out that, like, you could just go to, like, anywhere you wanted on, like, one of the cities and you could just drop loot on the ground and you could just leave and you could come back 20 hours later and it would still be there. Like, it, sure. it didn't go away. Um, so all that Bethesda stuff was still there, but it was just so far spread out and it, it really did break the immersion with all the loading scenes. It didn't it wasn't cohesive at all. Yeah. Um, so I think if you're playing Starfield for exploration, at least at, in its current and launch state, um, that's not it because you, you, you got to play that game, unfortunately, like a normal Western RPG, because it's just more about just going through the story, yeah. um, which I thought was a good story, but yeah. who knows? I think when it comes shattered space, um, since you've never beaten Starfield, um, that could be a time for you to actually go through and play it and beat it because, yeah, uh, you know, they, they're supposed to add like a land vehicle and they're going to add a, a new quest and new planets and house well, Maroon probably. And that might be cool. Yeah, that is cool. But that's the thing that bothers me about all these updates, you know, like, like they, like they, they say like we added vehicles and everyone is like, oh, yay. Who cares? Like, okay, you vehicles. Now you can get from one boring place to the other faster. That's okay. That's fun. Make the game better. Like, put better quests in there. Like, give me a planet. That's what I hope that the new expansion is. Give me mm-hmm. a planet with quests. Like, a, pl- a full planet with, like, quests here, quests there, interesting location here, interesting location there. That I don't have to go in the ship and, and just click on something and, and, yeah. and go. Just give me a planet with cool quests. That would be so cool. Problem solved. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that's what we're hoping for with Shattered Space. I'm hoping that it is, like, one yeah. planet. Or yeah, at most too with uh, House Varun and like you can just explore a big map um, with oh, cool yeah, stuff. Yeah. That'll be awesome. I, I promise you, and I'll I promise Maddie too because I'll do it, and I'm really looking forward to it because I have to stop myself from playing it right now. When that DLC comes out, I'll play through the entire game and I'll put I'll I'll make like a video for it uh, for for Retro V or for another channel. Um, I'll I'll put a video up. I'll, I'll make a video about it because that game. Starfield really fascinates me. I literally stopped playing, not because I thought it was bad, but because I knew, I felt like, this is not the game. The, the game will come in a year or two. It's not years. ready yet. Yeah. Oh, are you still there? there? Okay. I'm yeah. still there. We're good. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, yeah. Okay, Something, cool. it, it dropped for like a second, but uh, a little technical hiccup there. Um, but okay. okay, well, enough about Starfield here. I think we're getting, uh, <laughs> sure, yeah, we're getting yeah, a little yeah. bit too uh, too negative sure. here. Yeah, let's yeah. go ahead and let's go ahead and swing it back to like what we enjoy about these Western RPGs. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the games that I really love so much because you talked about um, computer RPGs, CRPGs, mm-hmm. and stuff. I had never played a CRPG really before. Like that was not my thing. I was more like a console uh, mm. RPG game or like the third person over the shoulder action yeah. uh, role-playing game. That was, that was my vibe. Um, but I actually had two experiences recently, which were computer RPGs and that I was a big fan of both of them. Um, the first one was Wasteland three mm. uh, Wasteland three by in exile, which is another amazing studio. Um, I'm looking forward to their next game clockwork revolution. It looks cool. Hope it's going to be great. Um, but Wasteland 3 was awesome. Um, you had the isometric camera. You had a lot of choices and, and dialogue and stuff. And then you had fun XCOM-style combat, too. I'm a big uh, XCOM tactic-type uh, fan, too. Oh, yeah. I like TRPGs. Yeah. Um, so that, and then also Baldur's Gate 3, which I did beat, and that was by far the game of the year last year. Oh, yeah. um, that game absolutely destroys uh, Starfield um, from a narrative and from a story perspective and from a world perspective. Um, so that definitely didn't do any favors to Starfield <laughs> coming out at, right after <laughs> yeah. Baldur's Gate because Baldur's Gate, God damn, that game is so great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those two games really made me open my eyes and made me be like, eh, maybe I want to play some more CRPGs. Um, 
what, what like what did you think about those games or any other really awesome crpgs you want to recommend well first of all it's so funny because of course Ingsal is of course another great western developer and the funny thing is obsidian bioware and Ingsal all started in black isle in interplay uh, uh productions that was one company all those all those people or well most of them left by now of course but that entire core team originated in Black Owl, which made wow. Baldur's Gate 2. Um, wow, that's, a over, that's an overpowered studio then. <laughs> back, dude, back then, those those guys were the shit. Like, everyone wanted to be in that team, or everyone wanted to make make, make those games. They took over. They took over everything. They were they were just the, 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 the top guys to beat. And then out of that grew Bioware, and then Bioware became the top guys to beat. Um, but to get back to your question, I... Literally just today, finished uh, Wasteland Three for a video uh, I, I'm making for a uh, for uh, retro well, retro rebound and my my new channel. Um, Great channels, by the way, everyone. If you're a subscriber of mine and if you're not already checking out Retro Rebound and Retro Revive, links are in the description. Check them out. Great content. Hell yeah! Thank you, thank you, thank you for that plug. Very nice. Um, <laughs> so I, I recently replayed uh, Wasteland Three, and that game is. I still don't understand how they did it. You can see that the budget is way lower, way, way lower than Baldur's Gate 3 because no cutscenes, no sprawling, yeah. anything. It's mostly just gameplay and text. But the choices you make in that game are so special. You could do... You know how how most developers say, oh, in my game, you can do anything, but that's never true. Like, you can't really do anything. In Wasteland 3, you really can do everything. You can kill whoever you want, take their place, Quest fail, new quest pop up. Um, it's also way shorter. It's a much smaller game. It takes place in Colorado. Much smaller area. You have this truck where you drive around the world map. You basically only have four major locations because you have the three kids you have to save, mm-hmm. kill, or bring back to, to the patriarch in like the main city. Yeah. So very few locations, but so well built up. So so fun to play. The combat is basically XCOM, a little less tactical, but... Most of the time, basically XCOM or Baldur's Gate 3 with guns. Um, yeah, great, great, fantastic game, of course. And then Baldur's Gate 3, what, what can I say? Um, I knew from the second I started Baldur's Gate 3 in 2020 in early access, like, this is going to blow people away. That was clear from the get-go. I, I knew ba- Baldur's Gate 2 is my favorite game of all time, like, like I touched on earlier. Baldur's Gate 3, as soon as they announced that Larian was going to be the developer, Larry, the developers of uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. I knew, like, okay, we're we're done. This is going to explode. This is going to be great. And it did. So I remember last year, around this time, when I said Baldur's Gate 3 is going to win Game of the Year, and everyone was like, ha, 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 idiot, you stupid moron, that's never going to win. Oh, fuck you. Ooh, it I did. It won, like, every award at every show. every award, yeah. And, and I, rightfully so. I can tell you again, it's going to happen again this year with War Horse Studios and Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, but we'll see Let's you think so? Out. I don't know. I, I have no <laughs> idea. I, I hope so, but that that would be that would be fun. They deserve it, but I I haven't played it, so I don't know. It, it's po- it's definitely possible, I think. Um, but Baldur's Gate Three is like the epitome of CRPGs. It's like the the next step. It's finally the 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 genre defining game that Pillars of Eternity from Obsidian was supposed to be five years ago, six years ago, but wasn't. Um, so once again, Obsidian got topped by by somebody else. Um, what Larian did with Baldur's Gate 3 is just incredible. Have you played Divinity Original Sin 2? No, but I want to. It's on my list of games that I want to go to now um, since I enjoyed BG3 so much. You'll love it. You'll love it. It's basically Baldur's Gate 3, just a little bit lower production value, like no big cutscenes or no, the camera doesn't go in like it does in Baldur's Gate 3. But apart from that, it's basically essentially the same kind of game um just an awesome story with a lot of choice awesome story great choices fantastic characters with great origin stories um super quests with so many choices and consequences uh, put into it and essentially the same combat system so excellent you'll love it you'll love it um yeah um and then there's a couple that we didn't even mention like some some of the goats of uh of western rpgs we didn't talk about cd project red um cyberpunk 
2077 is one of my favorite games of all time. I absolutely love that game. It was shit at launch. Um, but after like two years of patches and then a really good expansion, yeah. great, great game. I love it. Um, and then, of course, the Witcher series, which I have to beat Witcher 3 this year is on my to do list because I never beat it. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to write that wrong and I'm going to play that game later this year and I'm looking forward to beating it. Um, yeah. So do, yeah. Shout out to them. Any other games or studios that you want to shout out on the Western RPG front? Sure. Well, first of all, The Witcher 3, the exact same thing happened. I played The Witcher 1 back in 2007, 6 on PC. Amazing game. Then The Witcher 2, a couple of years later, another elevation, another another higher level. So when I saw The Witcher 3, I knew immediately, okay, this is going to be it. This is going to take over the world. And it did. Um, but a studio that we forgot, yeah, definitely uh, one that's making a grand comeback, I hope. Not the studio, but the game is uh, Fable. Yeah, love Fable. Um, Fable 1 was great. I remember on my Xbox, I remember getting Fable. You know the story behind it, right? Like P Peter Molyneux, like the main developer, was like a, a Todd Howard before Todd Howard existed. So mm -hmm. a lot of talk, a lot of promises, nothing came true. People got pissed. Okay. Um, but Fable 2 especially is in my top 10 when we did our top 10 ranking. I love, I love it Fable too. 2. Such a great, fantastic game. Now that I'm done with Wasteland 3, I'm going to be replaying Fable 3 for another video. I'm so excited for that because Fable 3, I remember when it came out, I loved it at first and then all the negative reviews came out and people were so sour on it that I thought, oh, well, I guess it's not that good as, as I thought it was, I guess. But I love Fable 3, too. I thought that was a really interesting concept. So when they showed the, tra the trailer for the new Fable, I was already in. I was completely in. I know people are mad that you're playing as, like, an ugly woman. Like, who cares? Like, the, the characters in Fable 1 and 2 were ugly, too. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's... She's British. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just legitimate. You know, have you guys seen people from Britain? Sorry, guys. <laughs> if you're from England, that people are from England are leaving angry comments right now. That's um, that's also true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but at least you're better than France, though, right? Of course. So, yeah. We we hate the French. I mean, oh, yeah. you're from Belgium. You wanna you wanna sound off about why the French suck, real quick? Uh, sure. Well, the French uh, during the Roman times, the French let the Romans into Europe, basically, or into Northern Europe, and uh, destroyed us all, except for Belgium, because we had one little town in Belgium that stood up to the Romans. I don't know if Americans ever heard of Asterix and, and, and Obelix, which were two like Gauls living in Belgium, um, who stood mm -hmm. up to them. Um, then later, the comics put them in, in Normandy and France, which they stole from us. So it's not a thing they stole. The French stole fries from us. People all over the world call it French fries. We invented them. Belgium, they're Belgium fries. We invented them. They stole it from us. It's true. During World War II, they let the Germans in. They let the Germans go up north, immediately surrender, didn't, didn't put up a fight. Um, so the French are, uh, I'm just kidding, of course. The, well, the French are, are, are okay. Well, the, what happened in World War II, I am, I am somewhat of a history buff. Um, so in World War II, and I'm sure you know this being mm -hmm. from the area, but for people yeah. who don't know, listeners, um, the French had, uh, I think it was called what, the, the, Mag the Maginot Line or whatever. They had their entire uh, border was very heavily fortified, like really yeah. hard to get through. Um, so the Germans were like, well, we're not going to go through that. That's fucking suicide. So the Germans planned that they were going to go through Belgium. Yep. And they asked Belgium, like, hey, you're going to let us come through and it's going to be cool. And Belgium was like, no, go fuck yourself. We're not letting you go through. Yeah. So shout out to Belgium. But I think where Belgium screwed up is, as I understand it, England and France both asked Belgium to please let our troops in to defend yep. your border. And Belgium said no. Yeah. Um, so instead, the, the Nazis came through and they came through and wrecked Belgium. Um, although Belgium did a really good job of defending. Um, they really punched above their own weight because they stayed in the fight and they were really fighting for a long time. All and they made the battles. Germans. Yeah. They made the Germans suffer big losses. Yeah, all major um, World War II battles were in or most. They did them. better than the French. <laughs> the French surrendered real quick. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, shout out to Belgium. And we also stopped uh, Napoleon in, in Waterloo. So you did, yeah. You, you oh, yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah, of course. You yeah, were there. I, 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 I you were. It. You were one of the people circling around the uh, the square formation of the French as they were defeated. I remember that exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out to Belgium. Shout out to French fries. The French. In the English, but anyways, back to Fable though. Yeah, um, I think Fable true. is going to be. I hope Fable is going to be great. I don't 
at this point with the, with Microsoft, um, you know, I never know what they're going to do. Um, but I'm hoping that Fable is going to be good. I think Playground has a good track record. Uh, the graphics certainly look great. Um, and I just hope that they, they nail the humor. I thought the trailer had pretty decent British humor. I enjoyed yeah. it. I got a couple chuckles. Yeah. Um, and For they sure. did show... Despite what people said, there was a couple of short gameplay segments in there yep. when they show like a little fireball. sword and then he threw like a little fireball thing at the dude and it all looked quite good. So I hope it comes together and I'm looking forward to Fable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, it has to be good, right? Like at this point, we've talked about this in, in, in private too, but it has to be perfect because Xbox still doesn't have their 10 out of 10. They need a 10 out of 10 and this can be the one. This has to be the one. If Fable isn't a 10 out of 10, I am chucking my Series X out. Or well, I'm not chucking it out. I'm just selling it because there's no point <laughs> of me having that console anymore. Yeah. Um, so it has to be a 10 out of 10. I think for everyone, I don't think there's anyone who can deny that that even if you don't like Fable or Western RPGs, this has to be the one. It's the final, the final chance, really, after Starfield, after Hellblade. Yeah. What else is there? Was there something well, I- else? I mean, they have a lot of stuff in development, but I think for me, like I've already kind of given up on Xbox as a platform holder and I feel like they've given up on themselves. Um, I feel like they are hedging towards, uh, towards just being a third party uh, publisher. Um, I feel like that's the direction they're headed. And I don't think, so I don't think it necessarily matters. Um, I don't think, I don't think Fable has to be a 10 out of 10 for, to save them because I don't think there's anything to save. I think Fable will come to PlayStation at some point. They're going to bring it to PlayStation. It doesn't matter. Um, and even if Fable is a 10 out of 10, I don't think that's actually going to change anything. I don't think any, like Phil said uh, on an interview in the past, like even if if Starfield was a 10 out of 10, nobody's going to sell their PlayStation and switch to Xbox. Maybe they would pick up an Xbox on the side. That's, that's the best you can hope for. Yeah. Um, but I just hope as a fan of Fable, as a fan of Fable, I hope that we get an awesome game. That's what we deserve. Um, After so I'm not worried about Xbox's console Jeez. share because I don't think they even care anymore. So, <laughs> But just give us a great Fable game. Um, yeah. Come on, Playground. Do it. Bring it home. We're here for you. We support you. Yeah. We want it. We need it. And uh, and do it for us. That's where I'm at. They can. They, they can do it. They Like you said, their track record, their track record is, is great. So they can do it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, they're a British studio. They understand that Brit- they're in, um, I think, Liverpool or somewhere. Um, so they should understand that British humor. Fable's always been like a British humor type of game. Yeah. Um, so I, I think if they nail the satire and the humor and they have some fun combat and some fun choices, you know, where you can be good and evil, yeah. um, I think they can make a great game and and hopefully we get that. So I'm really hoping Dreadwolf delivers. I'm hoping Fable delivers. Um, and we can have a renaissance, if you will, uh, like, a, well, we- like a 10-year-old plus renaissance coming back. We, we, yeah, well, we don't really. Yeah, oh, yeah, you mean for those franchises? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But for Western RPG, when it uh, when it's con- Western RPG is concerned, I don't think we need a relevant. We've no, always been no. on top. Like we, we're also getting Kingdom Come Deliverance two this year, which we talked about earlier. Yeah, not a great one. Uh, we're getting a Gothic remake this year. Also, another great Western RPG, which is amazing. Uh, it's a German game. Most people don't know about it, but it's it's fantastic. It's 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 great. Um, Last year we had Baldur's Gate three. What other games? What other big RPGs did we have last year? Um, so much. I don't know. Um, I wanted to talk about. Let's briefly talk about Kingdom Come Deliverance, if you want to. Um, sure. Kingdom Come Deliverance. You had a, a phenomenal video. Um, for yeah. anyone who hasn't checked it out, it was on. Uh, it's on Retro Rebound. Yeah. Um, where you talked about um, Kingdom Come Deliverance and how great it was, and you shared a personal story. And the creator of Kingdom Come Deliverance saw your video and left a yeah. comment. That was really cool. <laughs> really yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, but that was a great game. I remember, and I, I sent this to you in a message, but I had a funny story about that game. You kind of start out as like a nobody peasant um, with no skills at all. You can't read, you can't fight, you can't do shit. And that's super unique. Um, but I remember one of the early missions, they send you to collect a debt. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go collect this debt. So I go over and I tell this dude, I'm like, look, buddy, you owe some money. You're going to pay up. And he's like, go fuck yourself. I'm not paying up shit. And I'm like, oh, really? Okay. Looks like I'm gonna have to beat your ass then. So we go down, we start throwing down me and this guy. He kicks the shit out of me. (laughs) This dude, because I keep your guy can't fight. He beats my ass. So he beats the shit out of me. I don't get the money. And he's like, yeah, run away, bitch. Don't come back. So I, I limp off and I go find my friends. You find your friends in the town. 
the same friends that you had just thrown poop on someone's house a little bit earlier, which was awesome. And I tell my, the game lets me tell my friends that this dude just beat me up and he owes me money. And one of the options is it lets you ask them for help. Yeah. So me and my friends go back over to this guy's house that just beat me up. And we're like, what now? Now there's four of us and we jump him. The four of us beat him up and we get the money that we're owed. And then I'm able to go back and pay <laughs> my, uh, my old man. And that's just such awesome storytelling and sandbox uh like that you don't see very often that was very special and unique yeah i love i love that game i didn't finish it i need to finish it one day oh yeah you need it's not that long it's well it is long it's 60 hours but it's <laughs> it's not that long in the grand scheme of things like compared to Baldur's Gate 3 or or jrpgs i guess um yeah you- like uh, sorry, I, I'm just saying like that story that I just told is something that you do not see in other games hardly ever. Yeah. Like that that your character can't fight, so you get your ass beat, but then the game lets you go tell your friends and ask the, and then come back and jump him. Like that never happens. Yeah. Like that's just so such immersive storytelling. Like, what are your thoughts on that game and and the sequel? I love Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's one of my favorite favorite games of all time. I replayed it recently. Um, I played it in 2018 very extensively, but it was still very buggy and in, in not such a good state back then. I loved it back then, but I replayed it recently for that video on Retro Rebound. And I fell in love with it all over again. That game does so many unique things that no other game does, like you said. Like you really have to, you feel like the main character. Um, but why I think that the sequel is going to be even better is because the sequel is going to be the game that they wanted the first game to be. It's the same thing with Wasteland 3 and Wasteland 2. Wasteland 3 is the game they wanted Wasteland 2 to be. The Witcher 3 is the game they wanted The Witcher 2 to be. Same same thing here. So that's why I think this one is going to explode and like take take the world by surprise. We'll see. Maybe I, I could be wrong because they haven't shown gameplay yet. So it could be very well be that it's another buggy state and we're fucked and, and I'm an idiot for, for stating this. But it definitely has potential to do that again because this game is a Western game through and through. It takes mm-hmm. place in Europe. It like, takes place in Bohemia, which is the Czech Republic right now. Um, yep. It has real events, real people. It, it takes place on the actual landmass and the actual cities and towns um, that were around at that time. You get the right equipment for that time. You get the right shoes, the right clothes. It's very accurate. It's very realistic. Not that that makes a great game, of course. That That doesn't really mean anything. But in the grand scheme of things, combined with great gameplay, immersive, immersive sim elements that you haven't seen in any other game, a great story, a great personal story, and um, and fantastic characters, that makes like a, a yeah, that makes like a great game. So I'm very excited for the sequel. Absolutely, um, and I know I think you had a, a time limit here. How much more time do you have here? I think we're, we are about, almost done. I have about five more, five, five or ten more minutes. Um, Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. It's been an awesome talk. Um, I do want to give a shout out to uh, the TRPGs, the tactical role playing games. I really enjoy those. I'm a big XCOM fan. Um, mm-hmm. I consider those to be role playing games. Um, yeah, yeah. I just, I actually just beat XCOM 2 War of the Chosen last night. Oh, yeah. what, an, what an awesome game that was. Really, really difficult combat, but very fun. Um, I love that. I, I hope that we get an XCOM 3. I don't know. I'm not sure what Firaxis is doing right now. They, um, I think they were just released a game, didn't they? they didn't they just and Marvel's released... Midnight Suns? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That was it. Yeah, which didn't do it's all decent, that well. But... Yeah, sadly. Well, now, now that you finished XCOM Hue, you got to play it again, but with uh, uh, in Iron Man mode, which makes it a million times better. No chance. Uh, no, no, no. That, I'm oh. not a masochist like that, dude. <laughs> dude, I, I, I actually had to put it on rookie at some point because like that game was so hard. Even on like the easy mode, the game is still beating the shit out of you, and it's just so yeah. unfair how the enemies swarm on you, and like then they mind control, and then they they do all this stuff. It was like that game is tough even on easy, um, but it was so good and so fun and a great story, and and that final battle was really hard but really mm-hmm. fun. Um, so I hope we get that. There's a couple other TRPGs that I want to play. Like there's a game called war tales, um, where I think you're like, you're like a mercenary, like in some medieval Europe type setting going around and like these little stories. And that looks fun. I want to play at some point. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, shout out to Western RPGs and the greatness, um, the, the, the by far the superiority over those Japanese weeb games yes. um, where you're just hitting on underage girls and defeating God. That's that's not what Western <laughs> RPGs is all about. Western R- RPGs are all about awesome settings, knights in armor, swords and bows and arrows and magic um, and choice and consequence and actual stories and actual gameplay. Well said. And we love them. We love them. Um, so let's go ahead and wrap it up here. I think it's been a great talk. Shout out to the awesome Western developers who are making groundbreaking breaking games. And I just real quick, I'm going to give a shout out to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That's a Western role playing yeah. game. And I freaking love it. Yeah. That game brought me back to the Assassin's Creed series because I was so burned out. Like I was so burned out on the old formula and, and the games coming every year um, that I didn't play Unity. I want to play it. I want to go back and play it now because I heard it was great. And I and I love Napole- like the Napoleonic Wars and that time frame. I really, the French Revolution, I love it. Mm. So I do want to get to Unity. But I didn't play Unity. I didn't play Syndicate. I didn't play uh, Origins. Oh. Um, but when I saw Odyssey come out, um, I was like, oh, this game looks awesome. You got that beautiful Greek setting, the white sand beaches, the turquoise water, the Spartans. Uh, dude, that game was amazing. Uh, yep. And I did I did later play Origins, and it was pretty good. But oh, Odyssey okay. was, was phenomenal. Yeah, I so, agree. I agree. Fantastic so, game. So shout out. Um, but let's go ahead and wrap it up. Let's bring it home here. Any final thoughts for you, Lockmort, on Western RPGs? Well, personally, I prefer Western RPGs over JRPGs, but I get why people don't. Like, yeah. Uh, most of my friends prefer JRPGs. The people I work with, Maddie, Dustin, they all prefer JRPGs. Colin, they all prefer JRPGs, of course. So I'm a bit of a loner in the, in both those companies. But uh, yeah, Western RPGs are just, it's what you grew up with. You know, I grew up with Western RPGs, so that's my bread and butter. They, they grew up with JRPGs. In, at the end of the day, all games, all games are fun. All games are great, but Western RPGs are better. Yeah, and it is unfortunate that you are surrounded by a bunch of disgusting weeds, but, yeah. you know, they're good people, though, yeah. on the inside. You know, you just got to look past that filth. But, um, but no, I mean, I, I also do enjoy JRPGs. I, I really like, like, Persona and, you know, some of those JRPG series, like Fire Emblem, I love. Yeah. Um, it's just they're just not as good as Western and that's just is what it is, you know, but I hope everybody just enjoys what they enjoy and has a great time. Cause that's what gaming is all about. Yeah. That's what it's all about. So um, I do want to thank you so much for joining me here on this midnight one V one. You are awesome. Love you, man. You're a great, great fan of yours and your work and everything. Um, so I want to give you a moment here. If there's anything you want to shout out, I know you do some great work on some channels. Um, anything you want to give a shout out to or, or uh, a well, plug? I- I presume people already know where I'm at, but the Retro Rebound or Retro Rebound or LSM, or I'm starting a new channel soon with, with just my stuff on because Retro Rebound is awesome, but the, the algorithm doesn't like our three video per, per week upload. So we're just, just going to put the third video on our channel, which is cool, which is awesome. Um, no, so my shout out is to you. Great show, great name, your podcast. What's it called again? Uh, well, I, I don't really consider it a podcast, but it kind of is. It's just a series, Midnight 1v1. Um, we're just just chopping it up with one other person about a topic like we just did. So No, I, I make your, your other podcast, Games, Games Over oh, Plastic. Oh, the other – oh, Games games Over Plastic. There yeah. we go. There we go. Check that out too on uh, podcast services everywhere and on our YouTube channel. We yeah. just recorded um, – actually, with your, by the time you're listening to this – our Final Fantasy VII original 1997 spoiler cast oh, just yeah. came out. Uh, I played that for the very first time ever in 2024, and I loved it. That's not Western, but it was still good. Um, but yeah, but thank you very much for your time, and you're awesome, and, and we will collaborate and do things in the future, no doubt. Sure. Um, but yeah, that's been it. That's been it for us from Midnight and Lockmort Western RPGs. Thank you guys for listening. Leave a like and a comment if you got this far. You guys are awesome. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Peace out.